Alright guys, what is going on? And I got a little pin instead of a big one like normal, so it's a little bit quieter. It's not as bad, so you can hear my voice a little bit more. I wanted to clarify that up. But first, first, did you know that Kurt Hawkins does not flush the toilet? He scares the crap out of it. That was fucking awesome. Kurt Hawkins returning to WWE. I'm hyped. I've always liked the dude. First off, I was a big fan of Edge. So when Edge got those Edge heads, and it was one of my, well, soon to be pretty, pretty much one of my favorite wrestlers in Zack Ryder. And then out of that, Kurt, uh, Kurt Hawkins, he really didn't do much. He was like, he had a couple tag teams with random people, but, you know, uh, he, his matches were always, you know, pretty decent. So uh, I think they come out there and actually let this be a single star and push him a little bit more this time. I feel like it's going to be pretty entertaining. Uh, and I then now I just want to say that SmackDown was 10 times better than Raw. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. This is the second week in a row that I have thought SmackDown was better than Raw. Before we get into the review, if you agree with me, or if you don't agree with me, tell me why in the comment section below. I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, now, SmackDown started off with Randy Orton signing his contract to face Brock. Well, here comes Heath Slater with a big old fruit basket talking about how uh, he watched SmackDown over and they were going to issue him a contract. And then, well, he gives Randy Orton an apple. Oh my god, that whole segment was funny. He Slater is going on the mic. Not they would actually let this dude actual actually, you know, actually fight. I love it. So what leaves it as Randy Horton versus He Slater. If He Slater wins he gets a contract. So, um, we'll go ahead and continue on to where we're off with that. Randy Horton beats the shit out of him. He was beating the shit out of him and it turns out Randy Horton didn't cut get out of the four second hold or whatever um we're punching him in the corner so he slid her wins but randy orton beat the ever loving shit out of him after the match he fucking hit him with that ddt off the uh barricade and brings him in the ring he's an rko and then mocks brock lesnar and i was happy uh he mocks brock lesnar threw him with the german suplexes did his little i'm gonna s jump around or whatever i don't know that shit's stupid but uh loved it it was great uh, and then, so Heath Slater is knocked the fuck out, let's be honest, when they go back to the back. And he's like, uh, I whoop Brock Lesnar. I'm like, you mouth like you motherfucker. And they handed him a contract. I forgot what he said to fucking Shane McMahon. And he starts crying and everything, and they take the fucking contract from the dude. It, at, at a little bit of this, I'm happy that they took the contract from him because every time he comes out of SmackDown and Raw, it's always pretty funny. So I, I just, uh, at a point, I'm happy that they took it away from him. Then at a point, I'm not because I don't know. I'd like to see him stay on one show, but uh, that one part, one thing of me just loves how he comes out there and Raw and SmackDown, and it's funny as hell. So yeah, that was, that was probably my favorite spots of the night for sure. Okay, so. We got a six or well, twelve man tag match, showcasing all the tag teams because you know there's speculation. Well, pretty much I we all know it's probably gonna happen of a tag team title battle on, on SmackDown. So I mean, a lot of people on Twitter are like, "This match is pointless. Why are they even having it?" But to be honest, it was pretty. It was probably one. Of, it was better better than a lot of matches we had on Raw, and because it, they just let these guys go out here and. Fucking use it was chaos, and that's what I love about matches. When matches get you completely chaotic, that's when I'm enjoying it. And then the fans were, I think, a lot better than Raw. There were some parts of the show where it was like, eh, but then some parts they were like, you know, stepping up pace or whatever. And I, I like this match. So the Hype Bros, American Alpha and Usos beat Ascension. Brizongo and uh, who else was it? And Vaudeville was like, I don't even know, but I don't really like the other team. The team I liked won, so I was thinking I was pretty fine with it. And now we're gonna get to we're really actually started off the show. We've kind of gone out of order here, which I think that's totally fine. It was this one Miz TV segment was to me better than all overall, and I'm not even gonna lie right now. It Started with Miz, 
directly came out Dean Ambrose and directly came out Dolph Ziggler. But when Dean Ambrose and Dolph Ziggler were cutting back and forth with the promos, Dolph Ziggler hit that one promo. I was like, dude, I want him to win now. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Like, I was like, let's go Ziggler. Because when he's talking, his face was getting red. He was getting into a fucking super kick out of nowhere. I was like, let's go. Then we got these people on Twitter. I'm going to a lot to Twitter tonight, probably, guys. I was on there a lot tonight. So, we, there's these other people before Ziggler got all this, this big run. They were like, oh, push Ziggler, oh, push Ziggler. When they finally fucking do, they boo the motherfucker. And they hate on him on Twitter. You are some fucked up fans. Let me be honest with you. Make up your fucking mind. So, that's just what I gotta say about that. That was completely dumb. But the segment was completely better than Raw altogether. Pretty sure a lot of people agree with me too. Uh, so, we got a match between Dean Ambrose and Eric Rowan. So, I thought this match was a solid matchup. Dean Ambrose... Is, uh, is pretty good and I like I like the White Family. They are my favorite on SmackDown. I'm not. I mean, I'm being totally honest with you guys. I've always liked what the Whites have done. And so, Dean Ambrose wins with a uh, dirty deeds out of nowhere. I almost forgot the name of the tie of that move. Of the name of that move. I mean, why I'm stuttering big time tonight. Sorry about that, guys. But uh, we had freaking. After the match, I guess Bray Wyatt's leaving Eric Rowan, but me, my thought about this is when is Luke Harper coming back? Luke Harper, Eric Rowan could to add to the tag team division, but would I love to see American Alpha take on a big old tag team like that? I think they would have so much uh, chemistry. I mean, I just feel like that'd be pretty damn awesome. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know, or, or maybe Luke Harper could go back with Bray Wyatt. Because to me, Luke Harper is better than Eric Rowan. Maybe Luke, Bray Wyatt wants somebody better to help, help him out. I don't know. I like that Bray Wyatt's going out on his own. Because the dude, to me, whoever wins out of Dolph Ziggler and Dean Ambrose, they're either going to get taken uh, on a match with either Randy Orton or Bray Wyatt. So... You know, they'd be watching their backs. That's just my thoughts on this. And and Bray Wyatt's been in the fucking main event picture since this whole SmackDown Raw dress or whatever. He's been inserting himself into the main event every week. So that's got me thinking that the next person up is Bray Wyatt. And I think Bray Wyatt versus Dolph Ziggler they had a couple weeks ago was a pretty good match. And now Bray Wyatt versus Dean Ambrose we've seen before. Those were good matches. So either way, I think that it's going to be uh, an okay situation. Uh, especially with the mic work of Bray Wyatt. He's going to carry whoever he faces you know, on the mic for sure. That's just my thoughts on that. But, uh, you know, I thought it was pretty interesting. Now we got to get into this Eve Marie shit. Okay, so Eve Marie comes out. she got a new entrance. Which I liked. I had no problem with it. We haven't seen nothing really like that in wrestling. So I thought it was pretty cool to see. Um, but I don't know. I'm not really into all the lights too much for me. Uh, and if you're one of those people that watch America's Got Talent and you know that those motherfuckers, we have some of those like every year. So maybe three or four. I don't know how this ties in, but that's just, I don't know. I'm just getting tired of the lights thing. But she's supposed to have a match with Eden Marie. The little PA guy's going, and he goes, It's gonna be on hold, or delay. She is stuck in traffic. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? I'm like, come on, man. She's gotta have a match. She, she better be in that match at SummerSlam. I doubt she will be. She'll probably leave her team hanging. But, uh, I thought it was pretty funny. So later on, we have a Divas match. I mean, women's match, sorry. Carmella and Becky Lynch versus Natalia And, uh... What's her name? Alexa Bliss. I didn't really watch this match. But I do know I came at the end. And here comes Eva Marie. Or Eva Marie. Then here comes Naomi. And it... I don't know who won this match. Let's be honest. I just saw that part because I didn't give a fuck about this match. And it's the only match on the show that I didn't like. And I didn't even care about. Uh, I don't care about this whole women's division on SmackDown. To me it sucks. Even though we got Carmella and I really like Carmella. And Alexa Bliss is like, I just don't like anybody else. I don't like Becky Lynch anymore. I don't know, I just... 
You're just like, I don't care anymore. I mean, that's just me on that, but... I think we've covered just about everything. Oh, wait, hold on. They had some shit during the commercial break, which I didn't like that either. Why hold that on the commercial break when you had a, like, a freaking 30-minute long main event? You could have took a little bit of time off that. Because we had too many commercials during it anyway. And gave it to The Miz and Apollo Crews. Because we've seen, this is the first time we've seen them two face off or do anything against each other. There was, there's no build towards this match at all. A lot of people talk about how there's no build towards Ziggler and Dean Ambrose. This match has no build. They've had one spot, and it was on a commercial break. Really? Don't really know what I think about this. And I do think Miz is winning this at SummerSlam. But I'll get into that on my prediction show for SummerSlam. I just... This this makes no sense to me. If you're going to give somebody a shot at the Nintendo Championship, they didn't do shit. You see over there on Raw, they're giving Rusev and Roman Reigns so much attention for the... The minor title there, but on SmackDown, The Miz is doing nothing. And Apollo Crews comes out one time, they go face to face, and he ends up taking Miz out. That's it. That's re really? Come on. They could have given him at least two weeks. Fucking one. Man, I don't see no build for this match. This match is going to have no crowd reaction. I honestly think so. And are we going to have a match at SummerSlam? Baron Corbin and Kalisto, or are they building that towards backlash? Again, we saw Baron Corbin take out Kalisto. I don't know, maybe they do a match at SummerSlam or wait and build up the card for backlash a little bit more. That'd probably seem a little bit better uh, to me since SummerSlam stacked. Oh my gosh, they have, those are going to be a lot of matches. So I think they should hold off on this till backlash so they can have a little bit more matches. That just makes sense to me, but. Uh, so we're gonna get into our world, not a world title match, but it was our main event. John Cena versus Alberto Del Rio and AJ Styles on commentary. Now, there's a lot of rumors going around that Del Rio wants out already, and he's got opt out clause in October, September. Uh, ever since that rumor came out, he's been on SmackDown twice. He's already main event in SmackDown, even though I think he's lost twice. He's been on the card. He's not on the card at SummerSlam either. I don't know if he's going to leave or not. And they even gave him a whole promo package for when he came out and beat Justin. It seems like they're trying a little bit, but I don't think they're trying hard enough. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing him leave. I think he was way better than Lucha Underground. That was awesome when he was there. So I don't know how I feel about it, if he leaves or not. Uh, but I guess I'm alright with it. You know, the match was actually pretty good. John Cena and I brushed the Rio. They've had plenty of great matches, so this one was no different. Uh, John Cena wins by an attitude adjustment, and the ending dude was what got me. So, John Cena is celebrating. Here comes AJ Styles coming in with a freaking phenomenal forearm. And he's talking all that shit, gets up, looks back like he's about to come back and attack him again. John Cena hits him with that attitude adjustment again. Takes him outside, takes the fucking table apart. I'm like, oh god, really? Like, let's go. And he added, just hits him with an AA through the table. I'm like, let's go. I think this was a good SmackDown. Way better than Raw's go home show to SummerSlam. SmackDown's go home show to SummerSlam was a lot better. Like I said, I didn't really. The only thing, there was like two matches I didn't care for tonight, which was the Divas match for the second one. Well, it was a really the only one. But, um, and then. These stupid. What are they? I don't. I don't even know what to say about this anymore. They they did they gave no build towards the Miz Miz's match at SummerSlam. So I don't know. I hope. I don't know. They can't do anything for the Miz and Apollo Cruz now. They really could have given them more time, or something. Instead of having two Divas matches on the show each fucking week, give the Miz a more time on the show, especially since he's got a match. With a number one contender, and we've seen him twice, I believe. Twice. So, well, three times if you include his world title number one contendership. And then they, the next week he goes and wins the Intercontinental Championship number one contendership. They have a little brawl with all everybody in the match. Then the we wait two weeks, never seen anything about it. Then it's the go home show. He appears and takes out Miz. That's it. That's my, that's my really one big gripe about tonight. 
What the hell was that? All these people want to talk about there's no build toward SummerSlam, really. This one has the least amount. A lot of people said they're, they don't get why Dolph Ziggler and Dean Ambrose is happening. I think I love it. I, I, didn't, I don't really like how they let Finn Balor go ahead and debut the Demon on Raw, but I guess they had to do something because Raw was going to suck so bad. I don't know. The best build towards SummerSlam is probably the Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton thing. The, they've, they've done a great job with that. I think Heath Slater's made it better. <laughs> oh gosh, I really want Heath Slater to sign somewhere. Uh, but it was great. Tonight was great. It was enjoyable. So I think the next thing I'll see you guys on is tomorrow I'm going to do my NXT Brooklyn TakeOver 2 predictions. Uh, so that should be fun. Uh, like, subscribe, and comment. I am out. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, so we got SummerSlam predictions and TNA review to go this week. And I am out. Thank you so much for watching.